Welcome to the regularly scheduled meeting of the Jefferson County Board of Education on Monday, September 28th. And if you would please join us for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Superintendent, um, uh, Jefferson High School's entry update. <laughs> well, uh, not Jefferson County Schools. <laughs> I don't know about it. And, and re-entry might not be the uh, entire uh, term. We're, we're going into week five with our staff back and um, week three for our students. And I'm sure most folks have um, noticed that Jefferson County in general is in green this week as is Jefferson County Schools. And so the first thing that I wanna do is to thank all of our staff. Um, right now we have the largest concentration of people in Jefferson County. We're the number one full-time employer, so we have the most staff here. And of course, with two thirds of our kids on campus, we have the largest concentration of people in the county. So if Jefferson County is green, a lot of that, uh, can be, that can be heavily affected by whether or not Jefferson County Schools is doing what they need to do. So kudos to our custodians, kudos to our teachers. Um, we have had to date two staff people uh, who uh, have tested positive. In those cases, we've uh, sent uh, notifications out to the affected um, staff people. Uh, we got a third notice uh, this evening and Jefferson um, Health Department, our staff, are doing the contact tracing on that uh, for this evening. And of all the cases that have been, we've tested dozens of people, um, come back negative, we have not had a single case uh, where there was exposure here at school. The individuals, the two individuals who tested positive were external to us, they've been in external situations. So um, the staff have really done an amazing job uh, in terms of safety, in terms of cleanliness, in terms of following our protocols. Uh, can't say enough good things about them. Um, while we don't have cases, uh, the one thing that I can say that we do have is some pretty exhausted staff. Um, I have been meeting with faculty senate, meeting with personnel reps, meeting with um, school by school. We're scheduling meetings to review the levy and the bond and for me to answer questions. Um, and I have invited folks repeatedly, email me or call me if you're frustrated or you're overwhelmed and at least give me a chance to respond to it. And if there's, if there's one thing that I can say uh, that I think it's important to acknowledge is that uh, I, it, admittedly, I think that coming into this, I had seen what we did in the spring and how hard people worked and everything that they were capable of doing for kids. And we came at this from the perspective of you know, the county supports us and families support us. We're gonna support them. We're gonna give them all of these things. We're gonna give them on site. We're gonna give them virtual. We're gonna give them choices. We're gonna give them honors and AP and we're gonna give them safety. And to, to a large extent, we've done most of those things. And having recently come from a statewide superintendent's meeting, we've done them really well. I am still having other counties come to us and call us and ask us for protocol, ask us if we'll train their staff. We've actually been approached by a couple of other counties to see if we want to form a coalition to form of our own virtual program because they've had such a difficult experience with West Virginia Virtual um, and they've seen our virtual plan. I am not, because I get accused all the time <laughs> of, you know, Dr. Gibson, you're, you brag too much, you, you promise too much, you, and that may well be true. 
It, it really will. There's a fine line between I am so proud of Jefferson and they do an amazing job and I tell other people that and they expect our staff to hang the moon and while I think they did it, I think it came at a cost um, and I think it's come at a, a high cost. I have staff that I, I know um, have have broken some trust because I made a lot of we can do this we can do this we can do this push 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 and um, we did but we're breaking people doing it they are overwhelmed and they are exhausted and I've had people calling me at, at 10 o'clock at night in tears I've had people writing me three page emails that have been in education all their life and they love this job and they're doubting themselves and what they're capable of and they're so anxious and they're so overwhelmed and I you know the the strain of the workload there is just not enough time there's not enough hours in the day we haven't had enough months if one more person who's never set foot in education in their life says well you had three months to put this together I may scream um, and the staff is doing an amazing job they're doing everything that we asked and more and I know that the the board has given every support that I, I've asked for you gave the the telework child care agreement and you gave the extra pay to the teachers for virtual and you've given the flexibility for people to get for our old service personnel to get overtime for all of these things rather than than paying contract workers outside it's just it it continues to be overwhelming it just does and it's not even a matter of money you know it's just it's a matter of time time and resources I can't make people make computers any faster I can't make more hours in a day I can't make more people who want to go into teaching I can't build more classrooms right now so just I, I would like to acknowledge that it was a big ask and if I am honest with myself it was too big an ask I gotta I, I have to be clear about that even as someone who benefited from that my own child benefited from it it was it was a huge ask um, we will be putting out information about second semester. We are already starting to plan for second semester because we've heard from a lot of parents that they want to move their children, which would be another massive upheaval in terms of class sizes, in terms of reassignment of classes. And so uh, I do listen and, and learn and we are going to pull together very large work groups of teachers and say here's what we have, here's the method that we are looking at to, to have folks tell us what their choices are, here's what we're thinking for assignments, what are you thinking in your building, how do you want to handle this, and be, instead of putting all of these aspirations out there and saying we can get there, I I need to take a step back and say, what do you think is reasonable for us to do? Because I think I've been putting out some very unreasonable sky high expectations and people feel like because I've put them out there and we're Jefferson that they have to meet them and we're having to talk people off the ledge, L literally talk people off the ledge because they are so overwhelmed and so frustrated. and we didn't get into this business to break people and it doesn't help kids if we break people so uh, i'm going to be more mindful as a leader and um i still hear high expectations i still hear what people want and expect from us but they, they can't keep climbing some of this is imposing some sense of reality on these unbelievably high expectations without a whole lot of time and money you can't just pull somebody jerk somebody back and say here's a couple of weeks worth of training go and reinvent yourself and do it now <laughs> you know I, I, I just 
we'll 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 grow into it we just have got to be a lot more gentle with our growth and that starts with me so um i just need to to say that but um yeah i uh we have a lot of things on the agenda so i will stop talking and uh, we can we can move forward i have a couple of suggestions during the budget presentation that might address this and see where we go from there thank you and thank you for everything that you and the staff and everybody else are doing i mean it's mm -hmm. it's a lot and we we do understand that um do you have any additional superintendent comments that don't have to do with re-entry and where we are right now? <laughs> is there is there anything else? <laughs> no, ma'am. Well, happy belated birthday. Mm -hmm. I know your birthday was yesterday, so we can either thank count you. it as your birthday or the first anniversary of a significant birthday, however you choose. Oh, uh, thank you. <laughs> congratulations. Um, all right, moving on, the approval of minutes. Is there a motion to approve the minutes from the regular board meeting from September 14th? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Ogden. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. All right, any question or discussion? All in favor of approving the board minutes from September 14th? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. All right, Ms. Harner, did we have any citizens' comments this evening? All right, consent agenda. Madam Superintendent, are there any changes or deletions or? There are some changes on the uh, HR consent agenda that Ms. Lauren will make. Oh, Ms. Lauren, she you're muted. Mutes herself. <laughs> Ms. Loring? Um, it doesn't say that you're muted, but we can't hear you. Can you hear me? Okay. There you there go. go. Can you hear me now? I yes. can hear you. Ms. Lori, can you try again? No? Okay, could you learn sign language in the next six minutes? Because that's what we expect here in Jefferson. <laughs> I think I have them marked already, Dr. Grayson, the changes. Okay, Janet's going to go over the changes for you. Or if we don't talk back, she can come through there. We just can't speak back, right? Yeah. I looked on the agenda just before we started, and, and there were two changes of the DHR section that I highlighted those in your, in your paper copies. Um, the lead number 13 from the regular human resources page, and on the superintendent approval, um, there is. Uh, number 19 is a transfer and it was listed as an appointment. They were the only two changes I saw. I don't know whether she had any others. Yeah, I don't know why they don't. Yep, she's, she's giving us nope, the thumbs, thumbs up. The only up. other one that I noticed Oops. is um, number one on the regular consent agenda. It should be Washington High School, not Jefferson High School. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda with those changes? I just have one quick question first. Oh, yes, ma'am. Just um, confirming that the um, appointments number five and six are just replacements. They're not new positions. We don't have any new positions on this. That's, correct. Yes. That's correct. <laughs> okay. May I ask a question? 
What are experimental learning coordinators? Are they yes, sir? Oh, we, we can hear you. You can hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> That's a miracle. I don't know what's going on. Everybody else can hear me, but for some reason you guys couldn't. So I don't know what that is going on. I'll take on. it. Um, so with the experimental, or experiential hours, um, seniors are required to have uh, so many hours of community service to graduate and they um, submit those hours and that, those um, documentation to these two individuals at the school. And so this is an ongoing assignment and um, extra coordination duties that they provide um, for that, that program at the two high schools. Thank you. Is that number 10 and 11? Is that? Yes. Y yes, 10 and 11. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? All right. All in favor of approving the consent agenda with the changes? Aye. 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 All right, Ms. Ogden, you second it? Second. All right. Thank you, Mr. Cable. Any other questions or discussion? All in favor of the consent agenda with the adjustments? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, thank you. All right, moving on um, to new business. 11A, request an RFP to advertise for bids for the development for a Wildwood Middle School athletic field. Ms. Good White. evening. After uh, rejection of bids from the last advertisement for bids for the RFP for the development of Wildwood Middle School fields, we are requesting to go out to uh, bid again and to advertise for the development of the Wildwood Middle School fields. For this development, we are going to itemize the bids, so to speak, so that we have different sections, the excavating, the concrete work. Um, we are also going to put on state bid the bleachers and the installation of the bleachers, so that will be held separate. Um, we're just asking the contractors to do that um, excavating. They would also still be responsible for the seating or the sodding and seeing that until we establish growth in the bid as we did during our last bids. I'm asking this evening for approval to go out to advertise from the board. If there is discussion, let me know. Does anybody have any questions for Ms. White? Yeah, do we have the goalpost in there somewhere? <laughs> yes, the goalpost is very important and it will be in there. Yes. Thank you. I believe that will be on state bid as well. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Is there a motion to um, to do the RFP to advertise for bids for the development of the Wildwood Middle School athletic fields? I'll so move. Second. Thank you. All right. Any last minute discussion or question? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, thank you. Just hope somebody thank you, they'll be in advertising doing. tomorrow. Yeah. All right, moving on to 11B, fiscal year 2020 unaudited financial statement presentation. Ms. Marone, would that happen to be you? Yeah, you need to unmute yourself, Ms. Marone. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> That's me. Can uh, can you see my screen? Is it being shared, Dr. Gibson? Not right now, no, ma'am. Do you need some assistance with that? I might. I did. It just says joining you. It's just spinning. Um, it currently no. You you are not sharing your screen. Um, if you'll hold on just a moment, I can see if um. If I can pull up the uh, a Microsoft login and see if I can pull it up myself if you've sent it to me. Um, send it to you an email. I know we're having an issue with Exchange. And we are email. having an issue with Exchange. It does not, um, it's not pulling up. So. Here comes Jason. <laughs> Jason's coming to save you. There you go. On the other side, we're going to have to pull it over. Yeah. All right, let's see what we got. 
Can you see it now? No, ma'am. How about now? How about I'll tell you when we can? <laughs> <laughs> can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? <laughs> That's way more fun. with a total surplus of uh, salary and non-salary expenditures of a 7.8 million. We had a couple other things that factored into um, this fiscal year, one being House Bill 206, which actually trans transferred from Fund 61 to Fund 11 additional monies and unrestricted them. Because House Bill 206 uh, occurred after we had adopted the budget, it also gave us uncommitted funds of around $2 million, leaving us with a fiscal year ending fund balance of $9.3 million, um, some non-spendables and commitments that we had already had obligations for, a recommendation for an assignment of 
approximately $4.7 million, giving us an unassigned carryover balance of 4.3. Do you have any questions on the ending fund balance and the assignment or the recommendations of those assignments? I would like to um, point out that there are that there are some uh, specific things in this assigned to section that the board has previously discussed, but which we needed to sort of close out our fiscal year and see what the balance was. As we had discussed before, we knew we were going to spend less money on diesel because we weren't running buses every day, but we knew we spent more money on food. We knew we were gonna spend less money on substitutes, but we were spending more money on unemployment. So we weren't sure how all those things were going to shake out. So a couple of things. Number one, as Ms. Marone stated, this board has been very, very fiscally conservative. One of the reasons that um, we're in a good financial position is because we were given some pretty clear direction about where you wanted us to go. Um, we were able to pull up on our resources. We knew back in April that we were going to offer virtual again. We knew that we needed uh, laptops. We knew that your direction was a one-to-one. -one. So once we got the final figures, number one, the digital one-to-one -one initiative at the board's um, direction that covers both the remainder of the actual physical laptops and the um, technology position to be able to support um, the, the additional laptops for the one-to-one. -one. Uh, the COVID-19 allocation, you've seen that as we have to continue the um, funding for PPE that we have right now. Maintenance has nearly exhausted their budget and we are continuing to work to replenish that. Um, I think I was talking to Joyce today and T.A. Lowry, which has been uh, an, an exemplary place in terms of cleanliness, they're like, okay, those first, you know, 100,000 <laughs> disinfectant wipes, we're, we're gonna need our next load. So um, that's in part to replenish that. The instructional support, one of the things that the board has talked about in terms of supporting staff. There's been a recognition that the staff has um, had to do a lot of additional training and take on additional duties in order to make this work, right? Our cooks now don't just cook for the kids in school, they cook for the kids in school and then they cook for a virtual audience and then they deliver to both. Our bus drivers don't just drive kids back and forth to school, they drive kids back and forth to school and they drive buses out to Wi-Fi zones during the week. Uh, our custodians don't just clean the schools now, they do an additional four times a day high touch points going through. So everyone's being asked to do their job very differently in response to this COVID crisis. So one of the things that was suggested was, could we use this COVID CARES money um, to, to not just pay for things? We know it was given to us for things, for temperature scanners and for laptops and for wipes and we've used it for that. Uh, but in speaking with uh, WVBE uh, and um, I uh, raised this again at the state superintendent's meeting to say none of that works without people. <laughs> I, we can have all the scanners and laptops and things in the world and every cleaning supply and if we don't have people who are willing to do that work then all of this falls apart. And where in this COVID CARES Act do we have the latitude to be able to support the people who are doing this? And um, given that latitude in the instructional support, uh, we have a recommendation uh, for the board, uh, not for their uh, action tonight, but for their consideration. We're just telling you how much money we have where for you to think through. Uh, we would like for there to be consideration of a one-time payment to our staff uh, in exchange for the additional work and preparation that they've had to do as a result of this COVID CARES Act. Um, 
in looking at what we have available for instructional support um, and looking at the number of days. We typically would do for a full day um, training and work a $125 uh, a day payment. If we look at four days of that, which is $500 per staff person, that's for service and for professional, because I think they've both been doing a yeoman's job, that takes exactly half of our COVID CARES money. We got a million dollars in COVID CARES money, and that would take about a, a little over half a million of it. And I happen to think that that proportion is, is warranted. That money is for us dealing with this crisis, and the only way we're getting through it is people. Even though, we, yes, we have to buy wipes, and yes, we have to buy temp scanners, but um, yes, having the 2.5 for all of the laptops, but spending the bulk of the COVID CARES money on instructional support and giving our staff an acknowledgement of their work. It doesn't, you can't buy people's uh, goodwill and I can't buy their stress away, certainly. But this board has taken every action that we've asked for where they've said this would help us. And it would help just to be acknowledged that it's hard and that it's taking a lot of extra work. So that would be a, a recommendation that we have. The other thing um, for the board's um, knowledge and that instructional support number at the end of fiscal year 20, since uh, we were out of school from March 13th to the end of the fiscal year, a lot of our schools uh, used their monies at the end of the year to prepare for the next year. So what we did and built into that number is about 120,000 goes directly to our schools on top of their fiscal year 21 allocation to make sure that they can proactively prepare for um, what was left unfinished at the end of fiscal year 20. Uh, it equated to about 75% of whatever the remaining balance were, uh, was on the books at the time that we closed out. Uh, the recommendation is for it to go to all of the teaching and service staff. Yes. So teaching and service staff. Well, I mean, I think it's wonderful that, um, you know, we're taking care of those people that are on the front lines. I think it, you know, any extra money should go to them first. Um, is, you said the COVID CARES Act, so that's the, uh, the legal uh, way that you're able to do this? Is that, or was there money attached to that? The COVID cares that there was money attached to that. Okay. And is that just sent to every county by the state? Like, who's the funding source? Uh, the federal government gave yeah. money to the state, and then the state had a formula for how they then allocated it out to counties. Okay. And um, do we have any documentation that we are allowed to use that money for bonuses? Yes, ma'am. So we'll yes, be able to review that? If you would like, yes, ma'am, we, we certainly can. We can provide you information from WVDE about what's allowable under that uh, act and what's not. I think that's all my questions. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Um, the uh, last slide that I have is um, a summary of our additional revenue sources. Um, these. Uh, do not reside in the general operating budget, which is what we uh, review for revenue and expenditures. Uh, but these are balance, uh, are beginning balances, collections, and there's transfers in and out, and ending balances uh, for the board to see. I wanted to take note on the table referendum. Um, typically, our collections are closer to 1.7 or 8 million but there were still, we still hit 1.5 million this year, even though we received absolutely zero funding from the racetrack for both March and, or I think it was April and May. Um, so. Any questions on those additional funding sources? The 
there any updates on the um, impact fees through the county and what they're doing with that? That's a good question. Um, Ms. Mason, we submitted earlier in the summer, we held a meeting. As you know, the impact fees are reviewed every five years. Mm -hmm. They have an outside firm, uh, Tischler, uh, who does that. We met with the team doing the analysis and they made a list for us of all of the data that they wanted. Um, we've returned all of that data to them, and then they are working on bringing us back the formula and their suggestion to the county for um, impact fees. Okay, so that hasn't come back yet? No, ma'am, no, ma'am. Okay. <clears throat> Can I ask a question uh, about the previous slide real quick? Just, uh, Beth? Sure. Whatever the amount was for the um, digital one-to-one -one initiative, my thought is, and I know that we you know we talked about it. We know what it's going to cost. We definitely need a position. I mean, there's no way we can manage what we're doing technologically wise, especially if you know long term the program does pick up and do well because of the new law in the state of West Virginia. You could send your kid to any school, mm -hmm. so it does tend to make sense that we would get requests coming. Um, no matter what, if we continue to do uh, what we're doing that way. Um, that being the case, to take a certain amount of money and figure out how we're going to do that, I do think it would benefit us, though, to bring in or uh, even possibly bid out, depending on what our best case scenario would be, different companies to figure out what would it cost to provide those one-to-ones for every student in the county. Here's our three-year contract. This is how we're going to fund that long term, and then we don't have to replace the 2,000, 2,500 Chromebooks, the you know 3,000 Chrome, you know whatever it is that we're trying to do, knowing that they're not going to last, and knowing that this may be the down payment for that, rather than to just go ahead and do you know what we're doing. It, I just think it may behoove us. We need to at least look at that number, mm -hmm. so then we can make a decision: do we need to add a little bit more to that and take the jump and do it now, or you know, step back and continue the way we're doing it, knowing that next year or the year after, this is the choice we're making. So that's, that's a great point. And we, uh, Jen Rowan and Joyce and I met uh, beginning of last week, I think it was Joyce, where we went through, we had gotten um, a, a research study from EAB on um, companies that did, I mean, school systems that did one-to-one -one initiatives and, uh, what their uh, positives and negatives were for leasing, buying. Um, and there were some very uh, good points in there, several of which we already knew in terms of the quality of the machines. One of the things that we were researching, and I don't know that we have an answer on yet, um, when we looked at a contract for, um, for leasing and a contract for purchasing in I believe it's Doddridge, it's, uh, I, I need to check. Um, they had a program where at the end of theirs, once you kept it for four years and you graduated, uh, for the $1 buyout at the end of the lease, the kid got to keep their laptop. That was their graduation present. Wow. Here's your here's your $1 uh, laptop. It's a four-year-old laptop, but it's a laptop, right? right? Um, but we were uncertain given the uh, procurement uh, laws here, disposal, because anytime you, I, I couldn't, I couldn't let, uh, you know, Mr. Osborne buy that podium from us. It wouldn't matter, I have to put it up on auction, it's public uh, funds. Fund. So we're looking into, because we wanted to give the board that option, because one of your concerns is just with the lease, you know, it's continual renewal, but it's a steady payment over time. Right. With the purchase, it is, you just, you have to roll them on a, on a four-year cycle. And if you're going to roll them out at the end anyway, and the buyback on them is a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars, why not let the student keep theirs and, and buy it somehow? But we haven't worked through all the logistics of how can we present that to you as an option legally. But that's our goal is to present you with those options and our recommendation and our hope is that if there's an option for us to, for 20 bucks, this, this laptop that you've had for four years, this is your laptop. Go, go with God and you've learned to use it, you've worked on it well, it's yours, like take it. Um, and then we roll into the next uh, cycle with it. But, um, but 
we don't have all the logistics and the 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 legal sort of here's what you can and can't do behind that yet. So okay. we just yeah, we just confirmed Looking that we have numbers. the money once we taught everything right. out. Yeah. <laughs> But that's a good, I, I do think that that's a good point to ask, is that something before I, and I, I, I'm trying to learn not to make assumptions. I think I know because I, I talk to you a lot, but if that is an option, is that something you want us to chase that rabbit to see whether or not there is an option for when kids graduate, they graduate with their laptop? I'd say absolutely. Yeah, <clears throat> because many times that's the only way they're gonna get one to go to college. You know, they can't afford to have one any other way. Parents can't afford to buy it. It won't be the newest and the best, but they're used to it. It'll be least. functional, yeah. And what a good incentive for graduation, too. Okay, graduate, get your diploma, get a laptop. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It would probably need to be a true laptop, not just a Chromebook. Just well, that's, I know. no, ma'am. Uh, right now, fiscally for this, you're talking, you're talking Chromebook. Yeah. It's, it's, the, if you're talking about, well, and logistically for us to be able to manage it, mm -hmm. it can't be, if there's a separate hard drive in here and we have to be able to image those things and we have to be able to repair them, just the expense is so much more. You know, Chromebook's nothing more than like, you know, like an access device. That's the, they're still going to have to have internet to make it work, but if they don't have internet anyway, and it's what they worked on for four years, it's... Well, and I think that's why we really do need to get, you know, the companies to figure out who provides what and for how much. Right. You know, if it's provided, and the technical support is another piece of that, but it is something that it is provided, you have a call-in number, even if it's to India, but we can manage it. Do you know what I mean? At least it's a call-in number that, you know, we only have to have one more staff member and not six because, mm -hmm. frankly, you know, this is a lot. You know, it's a lot. So. It's a lot. Of fun, but um, it's a, it's a yeah. lot. And I appreciate Jen Rowan and people who don't know that she's new to us and we really are thankful um, to have, you know, somebody who really knows what they're doing and is, is working hard on that too. So. Anyway, Thank you. Well, getting back to this COVID CARES Act, and do the students have everything they need? I mean, before we use the money for bonuses, I'm just, you know, talking about computers. So is every, is that set? Because I know in the last few meetings, you know, trying to get computers to everybody. So do the students all have what they need? We, we have the funding for it. They don't have the actual physical laptops only because we ordered them and they just haven't come in. We have the hotspot access points. We have the laptops for kids. Could we, could we have more sets of textbooks? We have sets of textbooks for everybody on the ground and we have virtual parents who would like for us to buy extra sets of textbooks so that they have them at home with virtual too. But once they pull back from virtual, we have everybody on site again, that will have been money that that's not uh, going towards something we can use once it's over. So do they have everything that they need to run school right now? Yes, they do. But I would argue that what we need the most are people that feel valued and appreciated for the amount of work that they're doing. That's our, that's our biggie right now. We're, we've got cleaning supplies. We've got the temp scanners. I wish we had all of the laptops. And we've got the, the money right here. It's not even money. We just can't make them give us things any faster but that's a great that's a great question because yes, I know we did put an order of what 1700 of them in in April and we still haven't got oh we still haven't gotten the ones from from we, we put in April and then we put in another one when we got the other half a million dollar grant and nothing they're they're and when I was at the state superintendent's conference same thing they're sure. all you know folks are just like hey we put in I talked to a superintendent um, in the middle of the state and they put theirs before this pandemic hit they had had an order in because they were they had come into some money they put theirs in in February haven't seen them and it was just super frustrating now I've talked to other folks that they got theirs in and they put theirs in later it's just it seems random but 
most folks are saying they can't get the ones that, 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 that they paid for. You know, we've got a million and a half dollars sitting out there somewhere of laptops that should get here eventually. Well, as Ms. Rowan um, warned us back in April when we did it, when we pulled the trigger so early, she said it's going to be the toilet paper of technology. You know, technology. <laughs> <Yeah>. So <laughs> she was right. She's right. She's she right. was very preaching about that. Yeah. And who would have thought that us doing it that early when, I mean, it's April and we're like, oh, we're going to offer you virtual if you want virtual. And you guys, I got to give you credit. You guys like fronted the money for laptops at the time, not knowing if we were just all going to go back to school or what. Still not here. Very frustrating. Not all of them. We've gotten some of them, but not all of them. All right. Ms. Moran, did you have anything further for us? I didn't, unless there were any other questions. Are there any other questions? I guess I just have one more. I'm, as far as the bonuses, I, I know that teachers get some sort of a bonus um, at different times, or they used to. Is it possible that we can, um, you know, make this a regular where, you know, it, um, support staff and teachers get bonuses. What's the story with that? Because I know that in our paperwork here, I think alludes to what they get. Um, right here, we do give. That's a, a again. That's a great question. Right, right here. Um, super, super. Staff get what are called supplemental pay. The board voted to give them supplemental pay out of the levy, mm -hmm. and that happens three times per year. Okay. They get a check in November, they get one in March, and they get one in May. How much they get depends on uh, years of experience because as an incentive for the people who've been loyal over time and worked hard and devoted themselves, their supplements are higher. Those three checks are in our policy. Those supplements are there. We give those every year, and when we give staff their contract, we show them how much of their salary is from local and how much is from the levy. This as a one time, if the board voted to make it an ongoing supplement, then then we're going to have to come up with another revenue source for that half a million dollars a year ongoing. Um, right now, that COVID CARES Act, that's a one time um, funding source. They gave that, that one allocation to us. It's not going to continue every year. Certainly, uh, if we have it in our budget and if what the board wants to do when we start making next year's budget in like December because you know we start that in December and then we're coming to you by February mm -hmm. with the next one if your direction is hey that um, that uh, $500 uh, supplement that we gave to staff that one time we'd like to make that permanent can you put that in the budget and then let's look at what, what else we would have to remove or what else we'd have to do to make that happen, we're happy to do that. I'll do that at the board's direction. Um, I think there's a lot of uncertainty right now. Uh, we can do it right now out of COVID CARES and then in the next budget cycle, at your direction, we can put it in and look at what the budget would look like with it being permanent and ongoing. On, on page three, uh, just as a reference, the salary other of the supplemental checks and the cost of the supplemental check without the employer benefits. And just to give a little bit more detail, the November check is based on a tiered system, zero to three, four to nine, uh, 10 to 14, and I think 15 plus. And the March check is a flat rate for professionals and a flat rate for service. And the May check is an across the board $1,000 check. Um, and I, I know at least at the time that the May check was implemented, um, there were other revenue sources that came into the school system to assist with us being able to um, shift funding and accommodate other things. But the May supplement, um, because we double deduct for PEIA insurance, comes out in May and we do a double deduction for insurance both in May and in June to cover um, PEI deductions over the summer so that teachers and uh, service personnel checks over the summer are a little bit higher when they're 
um, out of contract days. Thank you. So Beth, what you're saying is, or what it looks like um, you've given us then as well, is helping to understand the numbers on the screen, but also understanding that, as Dr. Gibson was saying, the levy has to be redone every five years. We have to have it reapproved by the voters. Up to this point, obviously, the voters have been um, very supportive of the, the learning and the staff that happens in Jefferson County. Um, also, it looks like, as far as benefits go, it, what does the levy cover again for benefits for staff? If you look at salary other, that line item is the salary benefit only, and probably about 11% on top of the $4.3 million to cover the employer costs. Because when we give those supplemental checks, we also have to pay retirement because it does increase the retirement benefit for employees when they retire. Social Security, Medicare, um, workers' comp, on top of the straight salary line item. Uh, it also covers uh, full dental insurance for all of our staff because the state does not provide any dental insurance and it covers vision insurance for all of our, for our staff and their families. It covers dental and it covers vision for all of them. Those come out of the levy as well. Life insurance. Life insurance for up to $10,000 for policy coverage. Again, a lot of the benefits that our folks enjoy that simply aren't part of the state uh, package. So, in other words, you know, I get a paycheck from my job outside the school system and I have deducted insurance for vision and dental and all those different things. Uh, our staff has PEIA deduction for their medical, but nothing for vision and dental because we cover it through the levy. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Which the employee and their entire family. Which is a good draw to try to get because the salary is a little lower from Maryland and Virginia. At least it's something we have um, in some ways against offer that. I regret a lot on the fact that there is nobody else covering full dental and um, vision for the entire family. How about um, Beth? What do you know as far as other um, treasurers and systems in the state of West Virginia? Do you know of other systems, even in our state, that do it at this point? I do not know any that cover it in full for the employee and the entire uh, family. Okay. Without a, vision, vision isn't as expensive of a benefit for employees, and I don't want to speak uh, with Amy or Shelby. Um, but, uh, you know, it would be, it, it's still a charge that gets charged back to the employee and deducted from their paycheck. Okay. Not in Jefferson County, though, because of our excess levy that has, I think, since 1946 been approved. Okay. And so it looks like then, according to what you provided, the checks are approximately how much for service and how much for professional positions all together that come out of the levy with a supplement benefit to that? This, it, on slide three, I don't know if you can see slide three, the salary other mm -hmm. is the total cost. If you look at the 4.259 million, okay. that's the total cost for the actual check. It doesn't, the benefits actually get recorded below okay. in the individual line items, but you could take that 4.3 million and add about 11% uh, to that for the total cost probably closer to about 5.7. Okay. All right, any other questions about Ms. Roan's presentation? Ms. Roan, do you see anything in this presentation this year or in the numbers this year um, that you think we can carry through as far as ways that we have learned to cut back and save or do things with different departments um, that aren't going to be as costly as they were last year? I mean, I know last year was the first budget we had that we were able to finally write ourselves with being a, a, basically a balanced budget. 
And I know and we also worked I every year to do that. Health, hospitals and two hundred six contributed significantly to that. In addition to, um, even though we did expend a good significant amount of money in our same other departments, um, we had about two million dollars that we had not assigned to specific. Uh, that's a loaded question, Dr. Gibson, and I had that conversation today. It's difficult this year to look at because right now we do have the data to know what our additional needs are and all of our departments are just now working through what is COVID done to change our school system going forward so it's it's really easy to know that we need more hand sanitizer what's a little bit more difficult to drill down to the data this year is what is it in our traditional education system that we've done for years that possibly we are going to be saving and not expending funds you know uh, going forward like we know right now that probably transportation costs aren't going to be as significant even though we're doing some different runs as what they have been in the past but i'm not sure we have the data yet to support where those savings might materialize i mean everything this year down to we didn't use as much uh, electricity or um, toilet paper. Toilet yeah, right. Paper. <laughs> Sorry. That's right. <laughs> we bought a lot less toilet paper. <laughs> yeah, Good well, thing because they didn't have any. Doctor this year. So even our dental and vision costs, like going for trend data, we will probably skip fiscal year 20 because mm -hmm. everything was lower in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, Dr. Gibson asked me today, so yeah, we, nobody went to the dentist in, you know, May, or uh, April, May, and June, and so we're self-insured. How is that gonna translate? We're not gonna know until the next six months go, because I know personally, I canceled my dentist appointment twice. I'm actually going next week. And since we are self-insured in those claims, I don't know if we'll see a significant increase or if people will just go back to their regular business in 21. You know, those things won't materialize probably till the end of, of this fiscal year. Right, okay. Um, we do know some things on the other end, and that is we will not recoup our referendum funds that you know have been overlooked. Um, the Senate Bill 408 revenue, uh, we no longer qualify because that is tied to the three-year, five-year average rolling growth and we haven't had the student enrollment that we're used to seeing. And, and, and that's still an area where it's going to be different, but yet we're sort of re-imaging um, our modern education system. And this year, even with that enrollment, I'm not sure that it's enough, of, enough data for our, to, us to project forward, because I think whatever it is this year, um, the stronger that we get and just with our Jefferson Virtual Academy and where we go and the flexibility and the challenges that we meet. I think what you might possibly see is a rebound in that enrollment, but we can't project it out. It. Mm -hmm. uh, we can't yet. Yeah. And I think it makes sense too, uh, from you know looking at around the state, and I know Dr. Gibson, you shared the, does the state begin to look at uh, funding more growth, which is very minimal for minimal counties, even though we need to be able to have some kind of compensation to, to keep doing what we're doing. At the same time, all the counties would benefit from the social emotional support money, which is clearly growing throughout the state and is not gonna stop with the needs of students and families. It, it will be interesting because this was the first year of the new open enrollment, July 1. So, you know, we had been really gearing up and preparing because it, it wasn't limited and it's still not limited geographically. So we had been gearing up for an influx from Berkeley because we'd been contacted by a number of parents who, wanted, who had said they were going to come and enroll their kids over here. Well, given that it's not geographically limited, if you have a, if you live in you know, Kanawha County, or you live in Cabell, or you live in Mingo, if you want to enroll your child in Jefferson County Schools, there is nothing to prevent you from doing that. The law allows that now. Well, if we have a robust virtual program, then, and we've had this discussion, do we have, you know, when things 
go to whatever this is going to evolve into? Do we open up a one week boot camp before the start of school and say, hey, if you're going to Jefferson Virtual Academy, come in, meet your teacher, meet your friends, stay here for a week, look at the campus, talk to everybody, and then you go home and you've met all these people and you know them and you're virtual the rest of the time. People do remote uh, learning programs all the time. Colleges have, you can get, you know, degrees where you do your classes online and then once a semester or once a year you have to go on site for some sort of presentation or program there. There is nothing to keep us from doing that for any child in, in West Virginia at all. So, you know, there's a, never waste a good crisis. There's always opportunity in there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like the, you ever heard that? The Chinese character for crisis. Yes. It, it's, you know, it's, it, they get its opportunity. So you just, you've got to, you've got to move through that. We've got some, some good, some good opportunities to do that. But let me pull back without breaking our staff while we do it. So I don't want to get like all ambitious and say, and hey, we're going to bring in all these places, kids from other places. But it's an opportunity for us to ensure some longevity in terms of income so we can commit to our staff. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Dr. Georgia, yeah, we want to commit as much to our staff long-term, ongoing as we can. They're the ones who make it happen and make it work, but we have to have reliable income source to do that, consistent income source. Well, and I think the idea of you know looking at the possibility of, of the you know CARES Act money as a bonus to be able to definitely reward uh, absolute hard work, getting the levy passed so that yes, they're not losing three to eight thousand dollars in their paycheck um, and benefits first, because otherwise the first thing would be not adding to their salary. It's going to be making up the fact that how are we going to make up what they're going to lose? There's no there's no up. way we do it now. You don't we you lose don't positions. lose twenty one percent of your income. No company loses twenty one percent of their income, particularly not as the largest full time employer in the county and you make up for that. That's, yeah. that's not a making up from, that is a that is a, a level of devastation that I would struggle to be able to impart to people how, how difficult that would be, how much this school system would not look like what they've accustomed themselves to. So how soon would um, employees receive these bonuses? If I guess we vote next term, is that right? If it since the since the uh, uh, board is uh, amenable to that and wants to move forward to that, we could you could either you have every bit of authority to call a special meeting if you'd like to. You just have to give sufficient notice or at our next meeting. And then Beth, how long would it take us from the board vote to be able to uh, cut those checks? Or would we look at it in the next run? On their salary uh, run? Yes, I think we can accommodate it in any manner that you want. We would do it in either the next payroll run, we could do it as a separate check. It, will, it won't take much for us to do it because it's a flat rate and we can pretty much upload it and um, yeah, th there won't be any constraints on the payroll end for us to be able to process that check. Meaning that if we vote on it the next time, we could probably have it either in the second October check, the October 25th or the first November one the board would like something it's before uh, Thanksgiving shopping would Thanksgiving. be nice to help for Christmas <laughs> something I know if it was me the election. we could we could add it to <laughs> yes, the, uh, thinking shopping the November check for <laughs> the teachers and the direct teachers and or the I call them the service and professionals the boots on the ground we could add it to their November check and just bump all of their checks by five hundred dollars um, or we could do a separate check I'm just throwing out, like it as out there either way <laughs> I'd like it as a it's separate check. Office, yeah, I think as a separate check board. would be clear about the distinction that right now this is one time funding that we got for COVID. And certainly we if we're able to get the enrollment and sustain it, we'll of course support our folks. But right now, of what we got, you know, we got just under a million dollars. We'll be spending well over half of it on the people, not computers, not PPE, not people. So I, I think that's a big commitment. And um, it won't get confusing if it's not just rolled into their paycheck. It is a full separate check. I think that I think that that um, eliminates confusion and shows just a degree of of care and commitment. And I, what I that's think that that's probably a really good point, Doctor Getson, that I didn't think through. 
Did you say that so half of the money would be used? You said there was a million, so half would be used for the bonuses? Yes, a, a little over half, yes, ma'am, because to give all of the teaching and service personnel a $500 uh, bonus, and tax, it costs a little over half a million dollars. Okay. So with the other money, um, is there a plan for that? Because I, I think, you know, we have these extracurricular activities that need support, especially after COVID. Is there something in the works for students? Oh, yes, ma'am. That, that money has been allocated for the laptops that we've <laughs> already um, uh, ordered for uh, Wi-Fi routers, for um, uh, PPE, for masks, for um, disinfectant, for so all of those are expenses under uh, COVID Cares, the feeding program. I mean, we have thousands of cares funds. Yes, we have millions of dollars worth of expenses. It's just we got specifically nine hundred eighty something. It was it's just under a million dollars. Uh, yeah, the million sixty four. There were some set asides from the federal government and then indirect costs. There, our total grant was a million sixty four. So you're saying the other money, the rest of that million's already spent then? Yes, ma'am. Now, again, the, the the local money that we have that, that you know, frees up, and, and this is where we go into the budget process again, starting in November or December, we can move money around as you, as you deem necessary. It's just we have to make choices about if you take from one area what you're giving to another. Thank you very much, Ms. Maroon. Dr. Gibson, were you going to say something else? No, ma'am. I have spoken enough. Really quickly touching on what you said a moment ago about having, you know, some sort of, you know, camp for these kids to come to for a week and then disperse among the state, you know, where they're from. And just that connection, that there is a lot of truth to that because I know my own daughter has a dual enrollment class with a child that's somewhere else in the state that they went to governor's school together in eighth grade. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, that connection is there. Just give the kids some time together and then they're good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, just a couple of, did we have an executive session this evening? No, ma'am. All right, really quickly, I did want to ask you one question in the superintendent comments and I forgot about it. Did you want to mention anything about October 12th? And the oh, virtual and the because we will not be having a school board meeting before then. Oh, uh, so as we put out to the um, staff, we got an excellent suggestion from our staff. Um, we are moving our faculty senate day from Friday, October the 9th to Monday, October the 12th. And that gave us exactly three weeks to prepare for a remote learning drill. One of the things that we heard from around the state from these places that went red um, fairly quickly were some of their struggles in um, deploying laptops, not having folks who have the equipment, not. And while we're green right now and that's wonderful, it, it's important to us that we have to work out any of the glitches. We can have six months, we could have two years to get this ready and the first time you do it, you, figure, you find all the things that you didn't know that you were going to need. We need to practice it so that it's less overwhelming. So we'll practice on Monday and somebody will say, I didn't get my laptop or this didn't work or the Wi-Fi went down or I forgot my password or whatever it was that we needed to do. Or, hey, I didn't know I needed to tell you that I still needed lunches for my kids. Those are the kind of things that we'll practice on the 12th. After that day, we are going to send out a survey to parents and say, what do we, based on your experience, what do we need to work on for next time? And then that, so that morning on the 12th, we're gonna run as if we were in remote, as if on Friday the governor had said, shut it down and we run on full remote up until noon. And then we're gonna have our staff in the schools um, go through a, a debrief exercise. What worked? What didn't? What equipment do you need? Where do you think we need to focus at? And then we're pulling all of theirs in, doing the parent survey, and then we're gonna pull all that 
The idea is that we may run one more at the end of second semester, depending on how our thought is that now that flu season, like regular flu season is coming, we're getting the, the possible COVID exposures. I mean, we're getting a dozen forms a day. I have allergies, I have a cough, I have testing people like crazy, negative, 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 but they're, but they're learning and we need, we need everybody's trust. So we're testing whoever comes to us. Uh, but sooner or later, there's that possibility during the cold as it spreads and we need to be ready. So if we run the practice on October the 12th, get feedback from staff, get feedback from parents, we'll take all that, make whatever adjustments, and I anticipate maybe sometime in December, January, we'll look at the calendar that we'll run another practice one and then we'll feel, I feel like we're, we're ready. Well, there may be another practice one with a snow day. You never know. That's true. Like we might get one that just automatically happens anyway. So, that's true. You know, that may well happen. Yeah. That's a good point. That's a great we'll point. To, yeah. We've taken all the joy out of future snow days. <laughs> <laughs> well, we just need 180 days of instruction at this point, considering we started late and we still have to end early. Yes, ma'am. We still have to fit it in. So I think they would rather have um, that than miss spring break or, you know, who else knows whatever. But yeah, we've taken the joy away. You're right. Uh -huh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then just one last thing before we adjourn. Um, norm I'm one last thing. This is it, I promise. Normally in August, we have a board retreat where we go over statistics from the prior year and goals and things like that. I'm just asking if we could go ahead and schedule like a half-day retreat. I know your days are pretty chocker block full, but just a half-day because of the fact that we all had the West Virginia School Board Association training on Friday. And one of the things that they focused on were, you know, system-wide goals and things like that. Mm -hmm. That we could just refine goals and, you know, just the typical retreat that we do, where we have time to work through everything and not be cramming it into a regular board meeting. Yes, ma'am. Sure. So if we could work on scheduling, that would be great. Do you have some uh, dates that you would uh, like us to? Okay. I don't, unless anybody else has. I need to look at my calendar. Or are you thinking Mondays and Fridays during the week? During the week. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe if you guys give me days of the week that look good for you and things, I can sit down and, and play with those and we can like set up. Because I know we also need to set up a date for an employee hearing as well. So you want us just to shoot you a couple dates that our calendars are open? Yeah, can, well, can each one of you give um, Janet a, a range? So how about in October, you want to shoot for October? That would be good. Since it's where, that's later on this week. <laughs> so sometime before the end of October, if you could uh, give, shoot Janet like your top three, that would be fantastic. And hopefully a couple of them will match. That would be great. <laughs> how much time is it that you have to go? Normally we've gone from like 30 to <laughs> five, four, but I don't know what your schedule is like, Dr. Gibson. And my, we don't have yeah, my schedule is your schedule, and we don't have the um, testing piece that we normally look at. So right. yeah, I think it'll be a little shorter than usual. Okay. So okay. maybe half a day. Half a day. Okay. Well, I thought that's what you said. Like eight to twelve or. Jen, do you mind sending out an email to all of us tomorrow reminding us, and then we'll shoot you back the times? Do you mind doing that? Because otherwise, I always remind you. You do. You're so wonderful. I'm like, otherwise, I'm going to have to send you an email right now. <laughs> as soon as I walk out, it's going to be gone. <laughs> seems to be doing okay as a co-op. Good. That's exciting. I mean, there was some pretty big changes oh with legislative changes between Lisa <laughs> and... We're getting some customers outside our system mm -hmm. right now. Mon County is... We're supporting a, what? Their, what is it? The... Uh, oh, uh, their interventions. Interventions. Mm -hmm. They're running all through Epic now. Mm -hmm. 
So if you were, if you will recall, the state funded recess to the tune of three, a little over three and a half million dollars, and they cut all of that funding, and recess had to become self-sustaining by selling services, and they have. Their, uh, some their, have. Some have. Well, some two have. Yeah. We have a Mountain State right. has. Right. Pretty much. And several of them folded because they just couldn't be fiscally responsible or didn't have the service level that people uh, didn't have the things to sell. <laughs> yeah, he's done a great job. So kudos to Sherry Barnett. Yeah. Yes, she's done a good job. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you, ma'am.